All right, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, my name is Irina Nick. I am a product designer at Argo Design Studio. And recently, uh, we've been spending a lot of time designing uh, AI prototypes for our clients. And today I want to share with you my learnings. I want to share with you what design opportunities do large language model unlock. And we will also discuss the technical details about AI implementation so you'll be able to understand what is feasible and what is not. All right, are you ready to meet the next generation of the user interface powered by AI? Yeah. All right, yeah. everyone is ready. The next user interface, <laughs> chatbots. <laughs> Can answer anything, no designers are needed. All right, that's basically it. Thank you so much for my talk. <laughs> now, why are you laughing? So why, why do you think it won't work? Anyone? <clears throat> you never answer your question. That's great. Why do you think it's, it never answers the question? Because it doesn't understand me. That's a great point. It doesn't always understand the user. Anyone else? Why? Do, oh, sorry. Spoiler. <laughs> uh, why, why do you think chatbots might not be the best interaction? What could I even ask this chatbot? That's a great point. So users don't even know what is possible and they have to do a prompt engineering to get the sophisticated answer. And if they don't do prompt engineering, then they get the uh, result that is not uh, good enough for them. Any other solutions? Any other suggestions? Responses might be difficult to understand. That's great. Is that not visual yet? Um, not visual yet, yes, although this will be uh, fixed uh, quite soon and we are going to talk about it. Not everything needs to be conversational. Uh, that's a great point. Not everything needs a conversation. All right, I think we did a great job at identifying the chatbot weaknesses. Um, let's first acknowledge that they will take their place in the um, uh, web of the future. It will be super useful for customer support and we're actually already building uh, similar prototypes where uh, AI is able to help customers, uh, for example, to choose the right product or to answer any customer support uh, question. But uh, yes, it's uh, not the only type of interaction and it's not always needed to have a chatbot. So today we are going to speak what else you can do with large language model. And we'll start with the uh, simple case, text to text, and then we are going to gradually increase the complexity. So as you know, a large language model takes text as the input and text as the output. Very simple, only text input, only text output. So today we are going to see how creatively we can implement it. Um, and the first tip that I have for you is having the shortcuts. So as you've mentioned, um, users might not even know what is possible with uh, your AI solution, and they might not even want to spend time engineering the prompt. So one of the options that you might have is to identify the uh, valuable use cases for the users and have the shortcuts for them. It might be like in this example with uh, Gmail, where uh, Gmail CI suggests the shortcuts like formalizing the letter, summarizing the letter, and so on. Uh, it might be uh, something in between. For example, you might have um, a space for prompt, but then you might have some default option, for example, for image generation. Now also a lot of people are trying to learn how to design a pretty picture with the image generation tools. But we might also have the shortcuts there, uh, for example, for styles. So users don't have to engineer the prompts for styles, we'll just have the directions for them. The next tip that um, I'm going to share with you is finding the right moment of interaction. So another problem with chatbot is that it is sitting there passively waiting for you to interact with it. And not all the users want to interact, not all the users understand like how valuable it can be. Uh, so you might find a lot of value for the user if you identify the moment of interaction um, where help is needed. 
Like in this example, uh, Robin AI, uh, they help their users to transform legal contract uh, from the complex text to the more uh, human-friendly text. <coughs> and they're doing this by selecting the part of the text that you want to elaborate on and then suggesting you the options. Again, text as the part of the text as input and text as the suggested uh, option as the output. Uh, let's now uh, go a little bit uh, more complex and we add the context to this text-to-text -text model. Uh, large language models can use context, which means that they can use your data. Uh, it is also possible to control the access of this data, so uh, it's also possible to use the data and check for the access. For example, if I am asking this large language model to help me with email uh, based on my documents, uh, like in this example, um, I think it's like a party preparation or something, and I have some documents around it. Uh, the large language model will be able to answer me based on my documents. Uh, but if someone else asks the same question, the large language model won't be able to answer it because it doesn't have access to the documents. Um, let's see how it works. On the left, we, uh, we have a user facing up. So this is the place where user interact with, they uh, see the response and they uh, put their input there. On the right, you have your data that is stored in your place. It is not stored in large language model. So when user sends the request, large language model is able to find relevant chunks of data from your document list. And it sends these chunks of data as the context to the prompt template. And based on user requests and based on the uh, context data, it will be able to uh, produce the answer. One more example. Um, Knowing the context, large language model also able to provide you with more valuable solutions during search. So search is already quite compli uh, complicated tool. And now with large language model, we can make it even more valuable for the users. For example, if we ask for the vacuum cleaner filter, uh, large language model will be able to uh, ask a follow-up question to help users find the right filter, like what vacuum cleaner do you have? It will also be able to give you useful suggestions like how often um, should I change the vacuum cleaner filter? And then we, of course, have the search result. Also, the personalization might get more interesting. Our internet is already personalized quite a lot and large language models can push it even further. Like in this example, the uh, female uh, from USA uh, searching for the summer dress. She's interested in culture and the modest fashion. Uh, the simple search would find the relevant dresses for her. But with large language models, we will be able to uh, output the editorial quality page um, based on her input like in this example. And uh, I've, I've actually did an experiment with, uh, um, with large language model, asking it to produce the structure for uh, this persona, and this is the result. And I just put it in a nicer format. Um, let's now imagine what else we can do in, uh, besides text. So large language models understand only text, but this text can be uh, in different forms, in different shapes, uh, which means that we can map it to other domains. And let's see how. I've made the uh, diagram for you. Uh, that is a very simplified version what uh, large language models can take as the input and what they can output. It's all text, but it is just it just has different qualities and different shapes. For example, of course, we can have user requests, again, in different shapes. It may be just the plain text, it may be code, um, it may be something else. Uh, we can send the system context. Uh, for example, where the user is now on the web page, what is the cookie information, uh, what was the behavior of the user, or anything else. For example, a system um, has some information like uh, the comments that are available, and we can also send uh, this information to the large language models. 
We, systems itself can communicate with large language models. So it's not always necessary for the user to send a request, but the system can do it as well. Like we've seen uh, in the example with the Gmail, uh, the system sends the request to formalize the message and sends the uh, message um, with the request. And user just taps the button. So it's also possible. And of course, you can have your data. As the output, you can also have um, your response in different formats like uh, text, code, JSON, SQL commands, and so on. But you also can have so much more. For example, if you have your data and you want to allow large language model to modify it, it's also possible. Of course, it is the question if you want to allow to modify it, uh, because now they are not uh, as reliable, um, but um, companies are working on the reliability, so we will see the improvements in the future. Let's say you want to change the um, something about your product or you want to change something about uh, the information uh, of your customers, you can do this with uh, large language models. Large language models also can communicate with other tools, which means that they can send the commands to other tools. For example, to Zapier, I can send the command to send the email and it will be able to do so. Um, we also can um, modify the user interface based on the um, on our input, we can modify the user interface. And it will be in code format, but users will see just the, the, the visual result of it. So let's have an example. I have a speaker, a smart home speaker, enhanced with the large language model. And I'm asking the speaker, I want to relax. And uh, this speaker, this large language model solution is able to uh, to suggest some useful things from, from the things that it can do, like adjust the lighting and uh, playing my ambient playlist. So what do you think goes as the input in this case? Playlist. playlist, that's great. So we have our uh, data as the context, and that's great. This is one thing that goes to the input needs to understand what lighting is relaxing. Uh, yes, and this is already the, um, the capability of large language models. So it's not something that goes in, but large language model uh, is able to understand semantically what is more relaxing and what is not. Um, for more complex cases, you would want to train your uh, model um, so it is able to identify it more correctly, like giving it examples. But for example, if I gave it many examples, but I did not mention the word, uh, the word uh, relax, it will be still able to um, understand approximately. I might not like it, but it will be able to understand what might be relaxing and might not. Uh, so we have our data. We have uh, the user request. And uh, we have the available commands that a smart home device knows, like adjust the lighting, playing the music, closing the doors, open the windows, anything that it can do. So we have these uh, available commands as the system context. And based on this information, it will be able to understand if it is even helpful, it might not be, it might not find anything. But if it is helpful, it will be able to produce the response, uh, suggesting us to change something. And it will be able to send the command uh, to the smart home device. Another example, uh, this one was discussed a lot recently, uh, Galileo. Uh, they produced the design layouts in Figma based on user input. Uh, so let's think how it might work. Um, in this case, in Galileo case, we have the user request as the input. I describe the, um, what I want. And my assumption is, I don't work to Galileo, so uh, <laughs> I'm not sure exactly, but if I would make such prototype, uh, I would make available uh, pre-made components that system can choose from and then assemble it. And again, I've made the experiments. It works, with, for example, if you have the buttons, if you have the avatars, uh, forms, uh, any cards, it will be able to understand that, okay, I need to use these components 
in, in this page. It might also be possible that these components are bigger than just buttons and avatars. It might be just already the ready screens. Then it, it is even easier, but less customizable. Uh, again, depends on mm, how well, <laughs> how well it is trained and it is able to, um, accumulate the components together. So as the output, we have the chosen components assembled together. Uh, in Galileo case, uh, they also claim that they able to generate the uh, text for you, for the copy uh, based on your request, and find and replace images. Oops. Another example, um, I've recently uh, made another experiment trying to change the raw audio file to the ready podcast. So I had a, um, a raw audio files with uh, a lot of relevant uh, conversations, not a lot of, but some that I want to cut. And uh, I wanted large language model to identify these moments and cut it for me. So it is audio as the input and audio as the output. As we know, large language models understand only text. I cannot just put the audio and ask it, okay, now, <laughs> now do the magic. But I'm able to make the transcript with Whisper and um, FFmpeg is the, uh, the library that allows you to work with audio files through code. So I'm making this uh, transcript with time codes and this transcript I am able to fit to large language model asking it to identify the time codes that are not needed for the podcast. Um, the large language model is able to identify these time codes and uh, design the ffmpeg command to cut them. So the only thing that I have to do is just to run this command and have the audio file as the output. All right, now that we've spent 20 minutes discussing AI capabilities, I want to forget it all. <laughs> because when we are designing, it is important to focus on the use case, to find solution for the use case and not find the use case for the technical capabilities. So um, I really want you to use the knowledge to broaden your options when you're thinking about the solutions and not to narrow it down because of the uh, technical constraints or technical requirements. Uh, it's always easier to scale things down than to scale things up. And now uh, it's time to try it yourself. I've prepared for you several prototypes. The first one uh, will sort you to the Hogwarts school to the Hogwarts house, like Gryffindor, uh, Slytherin, and so on. <coughs> and you should then tell me which Hogwarts house you got. The second one, raise your hands who is an immigrant here. All right, so for you all, the second one will be useful because uh, I've trained large language model on the IND website, and it is able to uh, answer your questions about the immigration based on the information on IND and it will also return the resources from this website so you can check it yourself. And the third one, I actually didn't have time to put a front end so it's on the back end, it's the launching agent. So agents are able to understand what actions they have to take themselves. And uh, particularly this agent is able to search internet perform math and send the emails. Uh, so if you run, if you choose runtime run all, um, you can experiment with it. Yes? That sounds so cool. You think that would work here. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. I, I think I, I, in the break, we are all going there. <laughs> uh, and for the launching agent, I put the API keys right there. They will be active for today. I will remove them. I mean, I will deactivate them and won't remove uh, tomorrow. Uh, so if you want to use it tomorrow, then just put your API key. All right. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much.